Hi everyone, welcome back to Stitchy B. I'm Cheryl Temple. Okay, this week it's all about a pattern review and I'm reviewing the Edie Top from the new Sew Over It um, ebook which is called Work to Weekend. I've had this for a little while now since it first came out and I've not had much chance to do much sewing from it so I thought I'll choose the easiest or potentially the easiest pattern from the ebook to review. And I do love these kind of tops. This is what I'm wearing. Um, it's a three quarter sleeve, boat neck, although it's, it's not that boaty. Um, some come out here, don't they? And then you've got to worry about your bra straps, but this one, it hits just at the right point, which is handy. And then um, it's a nice uh, jersey top. It comes quite low down. So if you like a longer top, then it's quite useful and it, it just hits the hip at the right place. You could make it shorter if you wanted. Um, I wouldn't certainly wouldn't make it any longer. It also comes as a dress pattern too, um, which you need more fabric for. So for this one, this is the standard, I think it's view A or option one. Um, and this uses 1.4 meters of jersey fabric. I chose uh, the viscose jersey um, because I wanted something lightweight and good for layering uh, but you could also choose a cotton jersey uh, or an interlock something that's light to medium weight and um, this is brilliant for me because it gets quite hot indoors with the heating on doesn't it in winter and it's just nice to to layer if you wanted to it's thin enough also to put a cardigan over or a jumper Size wise, I made a size 14 and sometimes I make a 12 from sew over it patterns. I generally buy a 14 in the high street. Um, the reason I did that is that there's negative ease in this pattern, which means that the finished garment measurements are slightly less than your measurements, which is usual for these kind of fitted jersey tops. It makes it sound like it could be tight, but in this fabric it's not. Um, you might want to think about the type of fabric based on which size you use. For example, I've made a couple of Tilly and the Buttons Agnes tops and the one that's made in the cotton jersey feels a little bit more snug um, than the viscose jersey. So it's just something to bear in mind. These tend to stretch more the viscose jerseys and be a little bit lighter in weight. So they're, they're less forgiving they don't cover up your lumps and bumps as much as a thicker jersey might um, so bear all these things in mind based on your choice the best advice is just to have a look what you wear in your wardrobe and choose the fabrics that you like to wear now pattern wise I was delighted to discover this is a three-piece pattern so we've got piece A no prizes for getting piece B is the back also cut on the fold and then a sleeve piece which is the perfect length for me it, it's absolutely beautiful so um, I despite it only being three pieces it's still 20 something A4 pages to print out if you did actually want to print it at home yourself so I chose to have mine printed um, online and this time I use dotty prints which I love and they also do a thinner paper option which is this because I'm not a fan of cutting out patterns in A4 style paper I think it's too thick and I think it probably blunts the pins I don't know but mentally I think it it probably does for me so this is a little bit thinner it's not as thin as your tissue patterns that you get with the the big four pattern companies but it's just thick enough it'll last and last but it's thin enough to get your pins through so I really enjoyed sewing with that weight look out for the option if you go on their site but of course there's other places to buy from um, there's net printer and some other ones too I reviewed these a little while ago I'll put a link to that video in the comments in the description okay so as it's only three pieces I thought yeah this is going to be a really quick make so I'll set aside an hour and a half and I'll be in and out and done but nah it's not quite as quick as you think so the first stage in making this pattern is to stabilize the neckline 
And I'm always a bit impatient at these stages. I'm like, oh, really? Really? Anyway, you do need to stabilise the neckline. Just do it. Um, on the instructions, so ever it suggests that you use seam tape with a reinforced stitching line um, in the middle of it. I don't have any of that and I tend to like to use what I've got to hand. So I literally just cut some strips of my interfacing. Um, it's a woven interfacing um, and that's fine for when you're stabilising a stretch knit like this, as long as it's not too big a section. Um, so you want it to not, because it's a wide neckline, it doesn't need to stretch too much. So I think I got away with it. Now that took time because cutting into facing that's a centimetre thick or so it is a bit of a fiddle, isn't it? A bit of a faff, but I did it and I ironed mine on. And then you fold it over and then you stitch it. And because I was fiddling around with it so much, when I actually did the seam line for the neck, I missed a bit of the fold over. So I, I did, a. it looks like I've twin needle stitched it, but I just did two stitching lines, which means it's not perfect, but you probably can't tell. And I'm trying to be less of a perfectionist when I sew stuff. Which brings me on to sewing with stripes. So to make life harder for yourself, pick a stripe. Then you've got to worry about pattern matching every single stripe or not, whichever the case may be. Now, because I've chosen this fabric, which has got a, I think it's a 0.6 millimeter red stripe. It, it's not quite narrow enough um, to make it not bother. So you kind of have to try a bit if you've got bigger stripes they're a little bit easier to match but it's more obvious when they're out so there are pros and cons to sewing narrow or wide stripes i i i don't really mind i think sometimes it's easier with a narrow stripe and when they're even finer together closer together than this you don't need to bother because it's not too noticeable in the end I didn't worry too much about this so it matches in part I think some parts under the where I started and I left my walking foot machine at home so I've got a faff with a built-in walking foot and I did one side on my vintage singer machine and one side using the faff when I brought that in the next day and to be honest I didn't find it particularly much easier I don't think it gave a massive difference. The best tip for matching stripes is to pin the stripe where you're actually going to be stitching. So don't pin it at the edge because you're going to be sewing 1.5 centimeters in. Um, that's that helps. And another tip is is to baste the seam line first and then see if it's matched. Um, I know that's sometimes a little bit frustrating because when you always think when you use based on a machine on a fabric as fine as this you run the risk of putting holes in it and so on so use a jersey needle and um, i would hand baste it to be honest over a machine based i've looked at lots of tips online i'll pop some links to some youtube videos underneath for you about how to match stripes but it really is trial and error and sometimes i've made stripy tops and they've been absolutely bang on and sometimes they happen and I don't think there's any science to it I can't nail it yet I think I just need to practice more if you look at these on here I wasn't particularly that careful but they're not too bad they're not perfect um, and then under uh, the arms are difficult because you might match a few and then as it curves you'll find that it goes off a bit but again it doesn't matter that much I bought um, a lounge onesie, a loungewear onesie from Marks and Spencers the other day and even they can't get it right. I'll show you actually, I brought it in to show you. So I'm really loving this, it's absolutely beautiful. It's massive as well and it looks really tall. Um, it was on a mannequin in the shop when I, I only went in for a pint of milk <laughs> came out of this. But look, so even M&S can't get it right. So if you look on the inside, look, that, they're not worrying, they're not losing sleep about matching stripes, are they? And, and the legs, I think they've chosen to match the outside better than the in. But even there, I mean, look at that. 
that is <laughs> they're not giving a monkeys about stripe matching on that day are they so normally i'd bother and check all these things but i just grabbed him slung it in my basket but i bet they're all like that but this is a really stretchy fabric that moves so much under the machine now one thing you can do if you're really particular about this i mean with a stripe this size you really should have a go at matching it as close as you can um but you can also loosen the tension on your presser foot on your sewing machine i think that helps because on my singer which is a vintage machine it's quite powerful and it drags through quite strong and that's great but it can mean it can move slightly uh, so play around with it cut yourself a, a sample off first and just try and match the stripes and see how it works or don't pick a stripe <laughs> it's the easier option choose a you could choose a a floral that's, you don't need to match or you could choose a plain I'd really like this in black I think it's one of those tops that you just live in all winter so yeah it's up to you but have a go but don't lose sleep if they don't work out so yeah I really enjoyed this I think it fits me well it doesn't feel too tight like I was worried it might with the negative ease and the instructions are excellent there's nothing particularly difficult the neck's a bit fiddly uh, but you just need to go careful with the iron um, if you're using the iron on tape that they suggest and it does really help the neck to sit flat I've seen a few of these um, online with a wavy-ish neckline so I took real care in making sure it laid flat um, there's nothing worse is there it's so on display you've got to really take the most time about the neck I think less worrying about the stripes and the same with the hem so I now um, overlock all my edges and just turn them over once and there's something about the way my overlocker just trims and doesn't drag it's beautiful it doesn't stretch it depends on your machine but it, it really works for me this technique so try that I've mentioned it before it gives a little bit of a kind of faux cover stitch effect I only did one row of stitching but you could get the twin needle out if you're feeling keen but I think with jersey sometimes the stitches disappear a little don't they into the the fabric and you you don't have to worry as much I used to straight stitch on my um, hems and you should really use a zigzag to give added stretch but because I'm in here, I just think, well, if the, if the stitches pop, I'll just sew it up again. Um, hey, it's up to you. But you can do that. You could sew a zigzag here as well if you wanted to. But the instructions also say, um, sew a row of stitching across the shoulders. So they will be on display. Um, but it will make sure you catch the hem a little easier. I hope all that's helped. I feel like I've gabbled a bit today. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed making this. I'm enjoying it more wearing it. It's one of those tops that I'd buy ready to wear. Um, if, if it wasn't as fiddly, I'd have really loved making it. But yeah, it, you've just got to take it steady. Okay, that's it from me for this week. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next time. Um, I'm thinking about doing a couple of tutorials for Christmas gifts. Let me know if you think that's a good idea or if you'd rather I talk about clothes again um, and what I'm going to make or something I need to make something cozy as well I've got some lovely cozy new fabric um, so yeah we'll see but I'm thinking about a Christmas stocking tutorial and a Christmas cushion tutorial so if you like the idea of those then let me know I did have a little spell where I used to make and sell those on Etsy uh, once upon a time and they really sold well if you're ever thinking about doing something like that um, then yeah well I'll do the tutorial for you and uh, and see but let me know if you want it next time um, I don't think it's too early yet is it we're nearly into November aren't we really so we could do with cracking on if we're going to make any gifts so I hope you've enjoyed that give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time thanks for watching take care bye for now <laughs>